So intonation works as rising intonation and falling intonation, and that's how it works in English. Usually, usually no. Well, actually, yes. You know, usually rising intonation is for questions. You might use it for different type of situations, but right now we're just going to use questions. So rising intonation for questions and falling intonation for statements. And you, if you use it in the wrong way, in the wrong scenario, then you might press. Um, you might get the different message, right? So, for example, if I say I'm a teacher, I'm an English teacher, and I teach in New York City, and I love iced coffee, and I have been teaching for 10 years, versus I say I'm a teacher, I live in New York City, I love iced coffee, and I've been teaching for 10 years. So now you are expressing that confidence and you are given information, right? Versus, you know, giving that message to the listener, like, what is she trying to say? She's trying to ask me a question. I mean, it's just, she's sure what she's saying. Um, you see, now I'm using, because I'm using questions. So I'm rising, um, using rising intonation. So that rising into when you use that rising intonation, um, the pitch of your voice right goes up. When you use a falling intonation, the pitch of your voice goes down. And you cannot, you know, you cannot use the falling intonation when you are trying to ask a question, and you cannot use the um, rising intonation when you are giving a statement because it will just skip the idea, right? And maybe listeners might get a little bit lost. So, not only for these two scenarios, that is intonation also when you're, you know, when you're being sarcastic, when you're, um, when you feel angry, that are, you know, again, is intonation is used to express your emotions and your feelings, right, in English. But most likely, the most common ones will be the statement and the question, right? Rising and falling intonation. So you need to make sure that you use this ones properly. So you um, sound more confident, and it will help your pronunciation as well, right? And you will sound more natural and more native. So I hope you start using my three tips, okay? So you can start seeing the difference of your speech when you speak in English. So remember, you need to put into practice phonetics, letter sounds, liaisons, word connections, and intonation, okay? What we call the um, speech music. So pay attention to these things. Pay careful attention. Start to recognize the sounds first before put them into practice when you pronounce them. And pay attention to your intonation. Use a mirror. Try to look at yourself when you are speaking. And pay attention to what, what are you doing with your, you know, with your face, right? With your lips, with your jaw, with your, um, with your tongue. All of these things are very important when it comes about pronouncing words in any language. Now, in this case, we're, to, you know, we're talking about English, right? But um, these are three factors that I suggest, I strongly suggest to follow and see how it goes. And if you practice them, and if you put them into practice and um, use them, please give me feedback. Let me know how it goes. Post your comments below. Subscribe to my channel to see more stuff in English, more information, and more suggestions. And please hit like. Thank you. Bye-bye.